G'day listeners and welcome to another episode of the Scouting Australia podcast powered by Australian Property Scout Buyers Agency. I'm your host, Sammy Gordon, and today, guys, I'm excited. I'm Big Kev. I'm excited. <laughs> we do not have in the studio our regular co-host, Jimmy Ibrahim. All of you must be cheering right now, I know. What we have is we have a much more interesting character. He's a good bloke. I, we're having a good chat. He runs his own podcast, um, and he's actually only ever done one other session in a studio before in his life. So I'm very excited to get big Mr. Magic Mike Morlock in the studio, <laughs> mate. Welcome to the show. That is a high energy intro. Mate, it's yeah. a good one. You like it? I've been called Magic Mike a few times, okay. but I don't have the six pack to back it up. Mate. Mate, used to be a triathlete though, from memory. Yeah, but like that's not a body that women covet. Okay. It's kind of like a shaved whippet. You I know? think like, you're better looking than Chatting Tatum. I reckon you could have done it. Really? Yes. I yeah. don't know what your acting skills like, but I reckon as a as a figure and as a face, I reckon you potentially could have uh really? could have taken him out. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see how my acting skills are <laughs> as I pretend to enjoy to be here. <laughs> what a dog. No, it's what a, a dog. We're gonna get a different depreciation <laughs> expert on the show because Mike's a dog. No, nah, just joking, mate. I love you. You're a champion. Uh, no, mate, I'm excited. Actually, I love you. Mate, I love the dry humor. We've we've hit it off for a few years now, mate. So it's good to have you on the show and talking about we've spoken about getting you getting you on. I mean, we've only been doing this now for well, actually almost a year. So yeah. mate, it's great to have you here talking about depreciation. Well, yeah, whatever you throw at me, I've seen you scribbling something madly down. So I'm <laughs> I'm ready for anything. But you- no, it's a it's a privilege and, and congrats on the success of the show. So too, I've seen some of the charts. This is impressive. Thank you, mate. Thank you. No, nah, mate, it's uh it, it's 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 great to have, you know, a really, really good following of listeners now. People, I think, really, really loving, I guess, the relatability and, um, I guess, the real-life examples of what we're doing and, and, and what we're helping people do as well, mate, and giving yeah. some great content as well. Hence, again, why diving through depreciation, mate. It's a big thing. You always say to me, it's not sexy. No. Your bo- you always say to me, it's not, not as sexy yet. as my body. That's what you uh, say. Is that right? It yeah, is. Yeah, I think okay. that's a bit rich. Yeah. But Have you got that in writing? <laughs> I've got a video recorded from the REB Awards when you walk around with your silver bullion. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> that was heavy. That was a kilo in my suit pocket. You had about 20 photos with just randoms with this silver bullion. Yeah. Well, you say randoms. I say the CEO of Lang and Simmons. Okay, there was one random. There, there was, was one, one random. random. The dude a guy, in the casino. Yeah, I met a guy in the <laughs> casino. I'm like, hold this bullion. And he's holding it up going, oh. I'm, I don't know if that's the camera to look at, but we'll fix that in post. <laughs> oh, eh? That's good. That's good. Uh, good stuff, man. Well, mate, um, for those of the for those people out there who don't know who you are, obviously you're the director yeah, of MCG QS, yeah. being quantity surveyors. I Could, like to say managing director because I okay. picked my own title. Okay. Emperor, I think, was just a bit too <laughs> grandiose. Too rich. But but yeah, like I have a um, my business partner Marty and I started the business in 2011. Okay. So you know, we the other day I called myself Chief Innovation Officer. It doesn't really matter. Wow, yeah. Chief Innovation Officer. I know it's exciting. What do you it? do in that role? I don't know. You just innovate and you do it in a chiefly manner. <laughs> Mate, I love it. I love it. So what else do you do? So you've been how, how long you've been doing quantity surveying for? Because mm. you've had the business now. Nearly 15 years, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite some time. Well, I sort of started in the industry in about 2004. Okay. And I think I got my degree in about 2007. Okay. And I uh, probably started in property in around about 2000. I am quite old. Yeah. Yeah. You look it. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> No, Mr. that's cool. Mr. Relatable. <laughs> I mean, you got a, a, a cheap white T-shirt on, but you show up in your V8 SUV, I'm like, and call yourself relatable. Come on. Oh, yeah, mate. Oh, I'm yeah. ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> Just call them bullshit everywhere. Yeah? Yeah. There we go. There we go. Mate, what about, um? okay, so MCG QS, you started that in, it was late 2000s. 2011, yeah. Oh, 2011, okay. Okay, yeah. it's 2011. Okay, so you've been running it. And, um, and, mate, just to give everyone a bit of a background yourself, obviously I know you don't want to go into into the personal stuff being an investor yourself, but you are an investor yourself, multi-property yeah. owner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and and I suppose in terms of my philosophy, I'm more of a house versus unit guy. I'm probably more a, a regional guy that okay. would maybe have that more in common than, say, the blue chip sort of stuff because okay. I think diversification is important and underlooked. Yep. And, and also, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not on a million dollars a year, so yes. I can't 
I can't be buying all these chief innovation officer dollar. doesn't make a million bucks a year. MCGQS. No, I know. Well, the salary and there's dividends. You know, okay. you got to add it all up. But <laughs> no, you know, like uh, so. So cash flow is important okay. as, as well in serviceability. I don't like dipping into my pocket that Fair much. Enough. You can probably tell by what I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> the, hair, me, the haircut. This one I actually paid for. The last one really? I did myself. I yeah. used to use, give myself the buzz cut. It's a good yeah. way to save cash. Yeah. There's a good tip for people out there. Depreciation it's reports and give yourself a buzz cut. Yeah. Relatable as well. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. I love it. And hobbies, mate. I, I, I wanted to bring this into it because I know you have a very nice car. Uh, you like driving cars and obviously you're a pi- you've got pilot's license as yes. well now, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a proper pilot. Wow. Although I'm not legally allowed to fly in clouds. Okay. So that's not a proper pilot then. No. So you're a baby pilot. I'm a baby pilot. <laughs> yeah. I'm allowed to take off and land anywhere I want. Okay. By yourself? Uh, by myself. That's cool. With passengers. Yep. Uh, to a maximum, I think, of 5.7 tonnes. Okay. But I can't, yeah, there's a lot of limitations. So, okay. like, I can't fly tailwheel, I can't fly multi prop, I can't fly turbo, I can't fly in clouds, I can't okay. fly at night. Okay. I am getting my night flying course. So okay. I'm getting that done. So, if you. Okay. Wanna, so, baby pilot. Yeah. So, if you ever want to be frightened in the dark at 10,000 feet, I'm your guy. I'm pretty good, eh? I'm pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you take me out at night, but going through clouds at night with you, I don't know. You're not filling me with too much confidence. I'm not say. yet. I know not what yet. most of the dials do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's reassuring. And the Porsche as well. We're car we're, we're, we're car people. You and I. We love yeah. talking about it. Yeah. Well, this is my this is my second one. I, I basically <coughs> bought the same car twice. Yep. It's a the current one I've got is a seven eighteen Cayman S. It okay. is actually for sale at the moment. Okay. Are you so trying to plug it on we'll the talk body? after? Yeah. Low, one owner, low miles. <laughs> It's actually two. Baby driver. It's actually two owners, quite a lot of miles, uh, <laughs> and I flogged the absolute trousers <laughs> off it. Uh, no, I, I, link I, link to in description. <laughs> link to car sales ad in description. Yeah, for the flogged Porsche so yeah. seven eighteen. I'll do you a deal. Yeah, <laughs> it goes man. well. Does it? Do, can you depreciate it? Uh, no, only if it's in the business. Yeah, oh, it, I mean, the, it is actually no. It, it is. De- yeah, you're right. It is depreciated because technically. <clears throat> It's like you're you're not auditing me. Eh? Is this am I an Ashton Kutcher or something? Is that <laughs> ATO punk? Yes, ATO has employed me for this. Yeah, probably the less I say, the better. No, it, <laughs> it like it, it is technically not owned by me. It's owned by a, a corporate entity. But that's all I'm prepared to say. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting, mate. Mm. Moving on into the whole reason that we are here today. I was going to say, what is this show about? I'm grilling you. <laughs> I'm grilling you. I feel grilled. I need a drink of water. <laughs> Mate, we're here to talk about depreciation. The way I want to run this mm. is I want to ask you as if I'm a complete newbie and I don't know anything and I'm just asking you everything that I can to give our listeners as much value as possible. We have a broad spectrum of people who have never invested before to people who own many, many properties, tens of properties. Um, And pretty much, man, I want to ask to get the full spectrum because there's plenty of people even at the top end who maybe aren't even taking full advantage of this. So I'd love to run you through, mate, could you give, or could you run me through and the listeners through essentially depreciation? How, what is it? How Mm. it works? And let's start with that because obviously there's been some legislative changes that have come in in the last few years as well. Let's talk about depreciation, what it is, how it applies. Yeah, well, essentially it's an allowance for the wear and tear on an income producing <coughs> asset. So if you think about investing in property, you are kind of running a small business yeah. of sorts, right? So the asset is the property uh, and it provides an income with yes. the, the rent. And in running that business, there are expenses like your interest component of your loan, your property management fees, and depreciation is an on paper expense. So what we do is we estimate the construction value of the asset and then there's all sorts of qualifications and depreciation rates we can get into. But essentially, as the property wears out just mm-hmm. by being used, yes. it's not necessarily a tenant is being harder on it than another. There's a statutory rate of using outedness, okay. which is an industry term I've just <laughs> invented. Was it using outedness? Using <laughs> outedness. Okay. It, it won't catch on, so we can cut that. <laughs> um, and then so what we do is we work out what is the decline in value each okay. financial year and that comes off your taxable income. So the ATO uh, marginal rates change all the time and have changed since the last PowerPoint I put together. Okay. But I, 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 yeah, I won't, I we won't send that one out, guys. No, we won't send that out. But <laughs> to give you an idea, if you're on a hundred grand and you get, say, eleven thousand dollars worth of deductions in a financial year, mm-hmm. I don't know how good you are at maths, but that brings it back to eighty nine. Yes. I, I was wondering why you didn't just say ten grand. It's a very round number. Yeah. Eleven I don't know, I think it's because of the outcome. So okay. just just 
Just I'm wait waiting. for the big reveal. I'm waiting. On a hundred grand a year, you pay twenty four thousand dollars in tax. Okay. Uh, and on eighty nine thousand dollars a year, you pay twenty thousand dollars in tax. Okay. Roughly, it's it's actually a little bit less. Okay. So it's like eight thousand, uh, uh, three thousand eight hundred. <laughs> Back in your pocket. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Roughly on that sort of marginal yeah, yeah, rate. Yeah. So that's the whole point, mm. right? You pay six or seven hundred dollars for this report. Yeah. If you get eleven thousand dollars back, you get you know three thousand eight hundred, three thousand yeah. nine hundred back in your, in pocket. your pocket. Yeah. And that's just one year, mm. right? And the report lasts for 40 years. Yeah. And the average deductions that we get, it changes every day, but it's around about nine thousand dollars a year. So it's close to that per 11. property. Yeah. Wow. That's very yeah. interesting, eh? For that's residential. Big, man. Yeah, yeah, that's big. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. Something I think, and I'll, I'll probably dive in this into a little bit rather than right now, but but something that I think a lot of people um, don't take into account, especially in like recent years, is like properties, most properties were positive when interest rates were in the 2%. You yeah. Know, almost everything was tra- was running pretty much in front. Yeah. But everyone was kind of thinking that you only need it when you're negatively geared, which obviously a, a lot of properties now are because interest rates yeah. have moved so much. But a lot of people don't factor into the equation when you're actually positively geared. It can be yeah. a great way to write off the actual additional income so you're yeah. not paying additional tax on it. That's what I love about it. Well, when I do my cash flow deals and then you're writing off, say, yeah. builds and stuff, it's, it can be a great way. Yeah, because if you think about uh, in that example, you're on 100 grand a year. Now, typically, most properties today are going to be negatively geared. I think the last ATO tax stats it said about 63% mm. of properties are, okay. are negatively geared. Um, if you're in the blue chip, like you were talking about before, you're probably sitting at about the 99%. Yeah. Probably 105%. 105, 106. <laughs> probably. Not? That's you know, rounded just, up. Yeah. Just so I win that. <laughs> um, so if you're on 100 grand a year and you've yeah. got 10 grand cash flow positive yeah. property after tax, then you're on $110,000 a <laughs> year, are. right? So there's, 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 there's value in minimizing your deductions, Definitely. whether it's positive or negative. What I like is the properties that are negatively geared pre tax and then after tax, after we work okay, our yeah. little magic. Then it becomes positive. Twinkle geared. fingers there. Yeah, I like yeah, that. It's like a wise of, Wednesday. I don't know, shiatsu or something. Oh, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. It's like a massage. Cut the camera. I want to try something. <laughs> <laughs> We'll so do, okay, we'll sorry, later. sorry, mate. I'll let you finish there. You yeah. excited me with no, the pre- hand gestures. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> no, we pretty much covered that. It, okay. It's it's beneficial on both sides of the equation. Yeah. Negatively geared, positively geared. Yeah. You know, you're still going to get a benefit from deductions yeah. as long as you have a taxable income. Yeah, and I think I think the important thing there, guys. I know I, I kind of uh, I, I digressed it there for a, for a second there, but what Mike was talking about was obviously a lot of properties at the moment in the current environment are negatively geared. You know, like we talk about a lot of the time, um, even great bread and butters these days with great yields could be six, six and a half percent yields. A lot of the time they're still running negative right now. Now yeah. if they're two, three, four grand a year negative, but you're able to write off an extra eight, nine thousand dollars or eleven thousand dollars as, as Mike came up with the number before, yep. that additional amount that you can write off over that year. So you, you you're factoring in say, let's say you're four grand a year negative and you can write off your eleven thousand dollars. There's fifteen grand that you can actually write off. So the tax that you're going to get back on that essentially that back in your pocket will actually turn that property post tax time into a positively geared asset. It's hmm. so obviously not what we're really playing the game for. And I know you say it all the time. It's not, it's not a strategy. Yeah. Um, we're sort of investing. You shouldn't be investing to, to depreciate and to, and to negatively gear and all the rest of the bullshit, but it is a great way at the moment, especially in the current interest rate environment to help balance the books back into your favor from that side. So I love it, mate. It's, it's yeah. a great, it is a great little strategy to, to bolt onto the, the portfolio. Well, like as you said, but then maybe half unsaid, I've always <laughs> called it a bonus, not a strategy. Okay, there we go. Right? I'm trying to remember your wording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you, you know, you're going to do maybe a few onboarding calls today if I if I know you, or you actually you'll probably delegate them. I'm, um, man, I'm chief innovation officer. Chief at innovation. Yeah, yeah, okay. You can't talk to stuff. people. <laughs> Definitely not. But, so your salespeople will <laughs> will almost certainly not say our strategy is maximum depreciation and capital growth, cash flow. We don't care. We so don't we care. are going. Off the plan apartments. Mm-hmm. You heard it here first. Sam, Sam Gordon recommends off the plan apartments. <laughs> Definitely not. Ask in, this man. In in a complex of say four hundred, we need like three swimming pools. Okay, three. Yep. Uh, a gym. Eight lifts. Yeah. A cinema. Yeah. So if you wow. want maximum deductions, yes. That's the sort of property I would recommend. Okay. And that is the, probably the worst investment property both of us can think yes. of on the spot. It's fantastic for a depreciation perspective. Exactly. When I see yeah. that, I'm sort of like, yeah, like I'm just, <laughs> this is. This You're is in your a, prime. Depends if this is an audio format. I'm stretching as if like <laughs> here, here I'm ready to go. Yeah. Cause, cause I can, I can do a lot with that. Yes. Right. So almost like the, the worse the buyer's agent is, yes. the more value I can give to the client. <laughs> But I wouldn't recommend you go to a bad buyer's agent yes. so I can be more used to yes. you. Yeah. yeah. 
We'll just use you. We'll bolt you on the side as a bonus, as you said, to mm. the overall strategy. Yeah. Mate, I like it. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit further about, let's say, established versus new. Mm. Again, it's not like eh, this shouldn't formulate part of the strategy of you should be going out and buying new properties so you can you can write more off. But what's the depreciation difference? Let's say you buy something that's 10, 20 years old, uh, yep. like build, a build that's, you know, we're 2023 20, now to so 2013 or 2003 build or something like that compared to something that's newly constructed right now. What's mm. the sort of difference, man, like that we're looking at in here? There's, there's legisl legislative difference okay. and there's construction cost difference. Yep. So the cost to build something today is more expensive than it was yesterday, yes. almost certainly. Yes. It does sort of go up and down, yep. but in COVID it went gangbusters. Yeah, 100%. So the, what we look at is, is how much did it cost to build the property as at the time that it was built. So yep. 20 years ago it would have been a lot cheaper. Today it's a lot more expensive. Yep. Really the more expensive the build, the better it is for depreciation. Yep. Um, so even if it cost let's say 500 grand to build today to rebuild a house we that's 20 years old they're running off what it would have cost to build 20 years ago not yeah. today's value yeah yeah exactly because yeah. that's yeah because because it's really based on the purchase of the asset what you're purchasing as at the time that you purchase it yeah now the legislative difference is that on the 9th of may 2017 yeah write that down folks yeah at 7 30 actually wow um on the dot yeah okay because the budget speech by yes. the federal treasurer is always at 7 30 p.m okay. I, don't, I don't know why okay but like that is sort of like um that's a big that's a big event on the calendar okay i've actually last couple of years been hosting like live budget nights really actually right. i've noticed that yeah. do you get the popcorn out do you get the, the family around no i have a few few property guests okay. and maybe an economist i had uh, thanks for the invite yeah sorry about that one. <laughs> um i had pete wargen you know he's always no, sort of in the is. mix um Big shout out to Pete. Uh, and, yeah, we talk about, well, what do we <coughs> expect to happen? But anyway, that was um, ScoMo. He was the treasurer uh, back then before yes. he went on to be the prime minister and head of firefighting or whatever he left as. Um, he said on the 9th of May 2017 that you could only claim plant and equipment deductions on properties you either buy brand new mm -hmm. or in assets that you install brand new in a property. So yeah. you could have a 20-year-old property put brand new carpet right in it, yeah, and yeah. you can claim that plant and equipment item. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So plant and equipment is probably worth explaining what that is, right? Mm -hmm. So for people that don't know, there's really two components of, of depreciation items. There's the building structure, which would be things like hard fix things like um, – your abdominals, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. Have you let yourself go? <laughs> Not as much as you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. I'll take that. Oh, shining over you. Oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> right. So, like slabs, roofs, yes. structures. Yeah. You've you know, you sent me on a, ta a tangent. Yeah. <laughs> Hard I landscaping, you, concrete. I told you, that's why I needed my skeleton. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> yeah, so the hard fix stuff, yeah. um, the stuff that's really bolted or cemented down. Okay. And then the plant and equipment is the loose assets, so carpets, blinds, kitchen appliances, hot water systems. Yep. So the, the big difference- So the kitchen- yeah, the it's kitchen? a mix. It's well, the a kitchen mix. appliances. The kitchen. kitchen appliances would be plant and equipment, yep. so oven cooked up range hood. Yep. Um, if your floor is vinyl, that's yep. plant and equipment. Yep. If it's carpet, that's sick and you probably should get some help because okay. nobody should carpet a, a kitchen, although from a deductions <laughs> point of view. That's great. It is 10 times better than tile from a deductions okay. point of view. The depreciation rate on tile is 2.5%. On carpet, it's 25%. Wow. So 10 know, times. The yeah. 10X rule. Yeah. So Ray Cardone would be proud of you. Yeah, he would. We we catch up a lot. Okay. We sh we swap pilot stories. <laughs> he on his private jet and me terrified at night, unlicensed. Um yeah, so you carpet your kitchen. If, okay. Like, I mean, that's the silly it's thing about strategy. depreciation. Yeah, like oh, yes. buy an off-the-plan apartment, yeah. carpet your kitchen. Like these are all things that excite me because <laughs> the deductions are good. But Do you carpet your kitchen? No. Okay. No. Okay. So the walls. <laughs> hey, the walls. Yeah. The walls. Okay. No. So you don't paint them. You just carpet them. Yeah. Interesting. Carpet the walls. Interesting. So the way I got told about this years ago, I can't remember if it was you who told me or I read mm. this somewhere. It's almost like, um, if everything was unplugged or like, uh, let's say lifted out or whatever, if, yeah. if you shook a house, yeah. what falls out of it yeah. is your is your equipment, right? And the yeah, plan yeah, plan yeah. And equipment yeah, yeah. side of things. And then the other is the fixed structure. The Like the carpet <coughs> would sort of be nailed down. But, that's what I'm saying. Like if yeah. it was like, if before you did, and some of the blinds are screwed in, but it's that yeah. sort of thing, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, that's good enough. Try and pick me it's, apart. Come it's on, not mate. the way the ATO would technically describe it. Um, loose well, they're listening, so maybe you can. Uh, maybe you can. Well, give me a after that, 
bloody stuff before. They probably certainly are, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's all above board. I've got a good accountant. Okay. Uh, he set me up with a seashells um, shell company. So <laughs> Good job there. Nice work, mate. Seashells. Seychelles. 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 Yeah, he's definitely stuffed you, mate. You're gone. I got the cheap package, the seashell one. The Seychelles was extra. He was innovating and you were you got stung. Yeah, I don't know. You got stung. Okay. Uh, So that so that yeah, did we answer that question? I think we did. That's the difference. You know, you know, I wanna I wanna pick on quantity surveyors that I won't name because they should know better. I've heard quantity surveyors say blanket statements like new property is always better for depreciation deductions. Now in that example it seems True, right? Mm. And it, well, in that example, it is true because it's an older property. It's got a lesser construction cost, and you can't claim plant and equipment on that old one. On the new one, you can. Yep. And the, the difference in in claiming plant and equipment is probably double the deductions of what the other one is, yep. right? But picture this: you've got a project home that costs three hundred fifty grand yep. to build, right? Brand new. The deductions might be thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. You've got a property in, let's say, a blue chip suburb in Melbourne. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. This is this is a thought. It's, experiment. it's an example. Yeah. yeah it's an example. This is a safe place. Okay. You know, I'm not going to make you buy it. Okay. Although the Porsche, um, <laughs> the property built in 1920, right? Yeah. So way is this the Melbourne one. Yeah, in okay. Melbourne. Yeah. yeah, but way <clears throat> before the cutoff date for depreciation yep. on the original structure, which is 1987. Yeah. But it has had two million dollars worth of renos. Okay. Right. Now it might have had, let's say, two hundred thousand dollars of plant and equipment items that you can't claim. Mm. But we're still talking one point eight million dollars worth worth of Division Forty Three. Now you actually showed you were quite good at maths before, but two and a half percent of one point eight million is gonna be way higher than thirteen thousand dollars a year worth yes. of deductions. Like we didn't, I didn't see you sort of carry the one and do any long division there but we both know it's a lot more it's a lot more it is a lot more yeah and, and quantity surveyors will say new is better i'm like well what about that example mm. and it's sort of like oh yeah like that's why we hate you <laughs> <laughs> call them out who are they yeah yeah we got no <laughs> <laughs> i was excited there <laughs> yeah i know mate, i get fired off about other buyers agents also don't you worry yeah i like what it. are their names uh mate they're n- yeah <laughs> do they cut me off there yeah, oh, yeah, dogs. That's dogs. Uh, that's what a DVD extra or something. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Right I, in, right in. Facts. It's also in the show though. Show notes. Um, <laughs> all right, beautiful mate. And then we we went into a little bit before around like houses versus units. Yeah. So talk to me. Talk to me a little bit about that. What How are, much more superior? You know, I guess it's because I'll let you talk about this, mate. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Say the same property, 500, 500 grand. Yeah. House and a, and a unit. Yeah. Well, the main difference from a depreciation point of view is that when you purchase a unit, mm-hmm. it's typically strata title yep. or if you're a weird Victorian, it's a plan of subdivision. Um you own a percentage of all the common areas. So okay. the reason why I was talking about gyms and lifts and yes. swimming pools before is if you own a unit in this block of four hundred, you own technically At somewhere around one four hundreds. Of a lift, for example, mm. pardon me, and we've done reports on buildings in in Melbourne that have six lifts that were all worth a million dollars each. Okay, what is it, six Jesus. million dollars worth of lifts in that? Like the maintenance costs mm. would drive you insane. Probably why you should stop recommending them on this show. <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible investment. So, but you like the <clears throat> the positive of that is that you you know you're going to get the deductions based on your share of that, yep. not just the lift, all the common areas, and yep. it works even for a townhouse, right? Because yep. there could be a common driveway, there could be common automatic gates if you if you qualify for that. Um, you know, there could be a, just a little common swimming pool or something. Yeah, but that's the main uh, difference, and also the construction costs tend to be higher per square mm. meter. What I mean by that is if you think, if you picture like a big warehouse, most of it's open space, right? You might have, um, you know, poor frame steel, you might have concrete precast on the walls, but there's a lot of open space. Whereas you think of a bathroom, it's condensed Mm. with, you know, your waterproofing and your tiling and your PC items like your, you know, your bath and your shower. Per square meter, there's a lot of value in that. So you. Very dense. Yeah. So if you compare the wet areas of a house to a unit, you'll probably find a unit might be 15 or 20% of um, the unit is wet areas, whereas a house it might be 5 or 6%. Okay. Um, and the cost per square meter is higher. So just with everything shoved closer in, there's okay. more There's more walls <clears throat> per square meter. Yeah. So it tends to be more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Makes sense, man. Makes yeah. sense. That's cool. That's good. 
That's good. That yeah. is good. Mate, I'm going to run through a couple of case studies. Something I was going to run through here, but I think it's going to run better after the case studies. Okay. I think case studies are going to be a good way because we're just going to be able to break down, all right, this is the property yeah. um, roughly. Yeah. You tell us what would we be expecting yeah. as a depreciation on this thing. Yeah, okay? okay. Man, let's talk about, say, like a, a 1970s property that you buy yeah. and you do a, a 10K right now on it. Yeah. Run me through. Yeah, it wouldn't be much. Okay. So 1970s, uh, the cutoff date for the claim on the original building structure is the 16th of September 1987. Okay. I, I recommend people don't worry about the date. Just maybe remember 87 if okay. you can. Yep. So it's got to be commencing construction after that date. So yep. that means that there's no original bones to the building we can claim. Yep. And because of that legislation change from SCOMO uh, in 2017, there's no plant and equipment. Yep. So on face value, there is nothing in the original property. There is just your reno. Yep. At ten thousand dollars, the the worst you can get is is say Division Forty Three assets mm -hmm. at, at two and a half percent. Okay. Right. So you know we're we're only talking two hundred and fifty dollars a year worth okay. of deductions. Okay. So so it's bugger all. Bugger all, yeah. I would, in that instance, it wouldn't be enough for me to be comfortable justifying recommending a report. Okay. We would say um, hopefully you've got as good a documentation as possible because mm -hmm. if you're doing the works, I would recommend you keep a spreadsheet of all those costs. Yeah. And keep and, all your invoices. Yeah. And you're talking about keeping it till you sell it at the end. Yeah. Maybe Don't put them in a shoebox and post them to me like some people do. <laughs> really? Yeah. Post, they post you the shoebox? It's happened. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We've, I've even heard about people being posted filing cabinets. Okay. Or couriered. Yep. Like you don't yeah. put them in an envelope. That'd be big. You yeah. just put it on top of the Australia Post box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big, yeah, the big yeah. red one. You just put it on top. Yeah. <laughs> the big difference between us and an accountant, other than we're um, far more interesting, no, they actually we get quite a lot of referrals from accountants, okay. but um, not I think, anymore. No, nah. it's done. Yeah. I'm definitely not cutting that. Yeah, yeah I know. business is <laughs> ruined. I better sell the car. Um, <laughs> no, we have a go at each other because we're both in a boring sort of industry. But the big difference is that we're qualified to <clears throat> estimate construction costs. But okay. if you've kept all of your information, there's no estimating required, right? Yeah. So we would say give that to the accountant. Yeah. And if there's a situation where it's kind of like ah, oh, the costs are kind of bundled across a few assets yep. as like a package, yep. then we might sort of help them out mm. if we've got some photos but we yeah we, we would say that one doesn't stack so the easier easiest thing with that it's it's too old it's out of date in terms of what you can help with yeah. take the receipts to the accountant and let them do let them do the depreciation on because they've literally got the, the yeah. physical records of it yeah. they don't need to go through and try and assess it yeah and and like we um we've got nice guys but we do charge for what we do yes. you know not a lot it, it, but it is a business like you, yeah. you're not doing it for free yeah understood. i mean the advice is always free but we're not going to say we'll charge you xyz yep. when we're going to get you xyz times 0 0.05 yeah. back <laughs> we just won't do it yeah and i know it's quite often when we send over uh referrals uh, from our client obviously yeah. our clients to you guys um you guys always go um or we, we we always put the property in there these days as well because the first thing you always come back with is what's the property i'll yeah. check for you to make sure it's even worth doing so you're not just like trying to get out there and smash as many reports out as you can because if yeah. there's no value to the client there's no point doing it yeah so and what I found is that nice guys don't always finish first. Okay. But when people come to you and you say, look, this doesn't really stack. I can't in good faith recommend you use yep. this. They often come back excited to give you money. Like, does this one work? Like, I've got carpet in the kitchen. Yeah, and the walls. I listened to I listened <laughs> to, to your show with Sam Gordon. <laughs> yeah, I bought it off the Planet Palmer, which has been a disaster, but the rest of it has been great advice. Oh, mate, that's terrible. That's <laughs> terrible. Nah, it's good. Good stuff, man. All right, beautiful. Another example. Let's say you bought a property 20 years old. Mm. And so 2003 built. Yeah. Mass is impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> and let's say someone had just recently done a revamp and put 50 grand into it. Yeah. But you bought the end product. Yeah. Run me through the mass. Well, the advantage of buying the end product is you still get pretty much all of the deductions without having to do the renovations okay. yourself. So so you can still claim the full depreciation on, say, the 50K if it had just been completed? Not the full amount. Okay. So let's start with the original building. Yes. Um, no plant and equipment because it's okay. old. Okay. It could be six months old and you're dead. There's no plant and equipment. Okay. Um, but – the original Division 43 or the building structure yep. will qualify. Okay. So the concrete, the timber, you know, the, the vast majority of the cost to build something is Division 43. Yep. So you'll get 2.5% of that. So if it's $200,000 to build, you're talking $5,000 a year worth of deductions. Yep. 
if it's two hundred thousand dollars to build, um, you'd have to sort of deduct the plant and equipment component to get the magic figure. So yeah, let's say it's understand. it's two twenty to build, <laughs> but two hundred yeah, yeah. of Division Forty Three. And then the Renault's done by the previous owner. Well, we're talking fifty grand. Fifty grand. They've gone all out. Yeah, yeah. That's that's nice. Um, you should we send you the link? Yeah, please. <laughs> um, the it depends what they've done. Yeah. So if they've done some plant and equipment items, mm-hmm. by the time you purchase it, it will be previously used. I'm going to give you an exact example. Yeah. Okay. They've re- redone a kitchen. Yeah. Two bathrooms, repainted it, and refloored it. Yeah. Okay. What type of flooring? Carpet. Carpet everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What I wish they'd done is tile, right? Because even though the deductions were less, <laughs> they still get something. Okay. But because it's plant and equipment. Uh, it's not a brand new asset okay. when you purchase it. Okay. So the carpet's gone. Okay. If we talk about the kitchen, you've lost your oven, your cooktop, your range hood, okay. or your stove. So you've lost all that. Yeah. Okay. You won't be able to claim deductions okay. on that. But a kitchen is not just an oven, cooktop, range hood. They don't mm. float in space. Uh, I haven't <laughs> been to your house. Actually, I have been to your house, but you didn't let me inside. Um, <laughs> Definitely not. I presume. <laughs> this is probably for <laughs> the best. The dogs on you. <laughs> yeah. Probably for the best. Um, but I presume there's kitchen cabinets that hold all of these appliances. Yes. They are Division 43. Yeah. So you will Stupid be able to claim that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and in the bathroom, most of it's Division 43, most of it's structure. Okay. Um, you've got things like exhaust fans or heated towel rails yep. or spa bath pumps. They had plant and equipment mm-hmm. items. If you're doing a reno in a rental and putting a spa bath pump in, you're up to some it's <laughs> not know, some only fan side hustle <laughs> or something. Um, so the guys did say they, they speak with influencers here. The, do uh, they? The podcasters. They so you did, might be able to help some, uh, some, some of the guys here with uh, depreciation. I've never actually been to that domain. I couldn't even tell you what it looks like, but I reckon like they could. Likely story. Yeah, yeah. Every, <laughs> everyone's got a fetish, right? There's probably a market for like middle-aged Where chubby quantity surveyors. Where are you like going with this? Just side hustle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> for you. And then it's sort of like, I don't know, deductible haircuts. Probably. You know, I don't know. Um, you, anyway. could, you could depreciate your spa? Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's where I was going with it. Yeah. You just went a completely different way. That's where I was going with it. I reckon. Depreciable spa. I reckon. The bath itself is Division 43. Okay. I'm trying to bring it. Okay. So at 50 grand, maybe you've lost five of it, yep. right? So you got $45,000 okay. at 2.5%. Okay. Right? So you add that to your $5,000 and that's a worthwhile schedule. Okay. So um, just to recap on that, 20-year-old mm. property, 50K yep. worth of, of renovations on it, five grand we've got to miss, but five grand a year. Yep. For the actual original structure, that's your div forty three, mm-hmm. yeah, yep. and then your plant and equipment. How much? Sorry, how much did you yeah. say a year? Uh, what we said forty five thousand yep. at two and a half percent. So at a, at a at a hundred thousand, it's two thousand five hundred. Yep. So let's yep. say twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be close. Well enough. done, well done. Yeah. So I six, tried to catch you there, but yeah. you were good. Technically, you were good. I I won't have nailed that, but say six thousand two hundred a year. That's good. That's yeah. worthwhile. Yeah, that's definitely worth doing. Absolutely. Can I ask you something then? On the flip side, what if you bought the twenty year old property and you put the 50 grand into it. Yeah. Is it just the extra five grand? Yes. Okay. But there's weird caveats to it, right? Like if you live in it while you renovate it, you can actually make the plant and equipment items secondhand assets. Like the ATO have said somewhere between staying at your investment property if it's brand new uh, for one night is okay, but for a month is not okay. So you will actually... Even if you don't turn your oven on, because I know you're the you sort of look like you're more a takeout guy. Do um, I? <laughs> do I? No, like it's fun. <laughs> it's funny because you actually look like you could crack fleas off that jawline. I mean, like, I feel like we need Heading a studio to- audience so I can sort of go. What do you reckon? They can probably um, do the clap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That clap. That's That's probably already gone now because they put it in. Yeah, and now we're talking about it's clunky. Yes, it's clunky. Uh, we'll it's clip this life. bit. And they and the audience will go. Mm. Please continue. Why are we talking about takeaway food? I don't know. Uh, Shannon Tatum's jawline. Yeah. Uh, no, I've lost it. The oven. The oven. You the, oven. the oven. Oh yeah, you don't even skeleton. use skeleton. That's why I have the skeleton. <laughs> These tangents are killing me. Uh, <laughs> have you been on a podcast like this before? No. Good. No. no. Good. I, I hope never to again. <laughs> Although, aren't we doing another one after? Oh, that's Not ruining. That's, yeah. It's corn now. Jeez. Go on. Even if you don't turn you the it. oven on, yeah. like if you occupy that premises for long enough, the ATO will consider it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. the old rules, pre, like the good old days, mm. pre 2017, yeah. like, I don't know, you probably were um, playing under nines rugby or something then. <laughs> um, pre 2017, 
you could buy a property, an old property. You could claim all the plant and mm. equipment items till till you're blue in the face. Yeah. You could move in for say a year. And you just wouldn't claim the deductions for that year. Yep. And then when you put a tenant back in, you're back off to the races. Mm. Whereas since 2017, even if you buy a mm. brand new property, uh, you rent it out for a year, you live in it for a year, from that moment you start living in it, you kill the plant equipment deductions forever. Yeah, right. Thanks, Gomo. Wow. Yeah. You bastard. I know. Doc. I know. <laughs> All right. And so to recap, because you just went on a 45-minute tangent. Is that what buy, that is? If you buy... A twenty-year-old property, fifty grand of works into it. You're around about sixty-two hundred dollars a year. Oh, both both ways. You're around about sixty-two hundred dollars a year, even if you buy it with the plant and equipment as well. I'm um, yep. sorry, with the with the fifty k reno on it, it's not really going to change that much. Not that much. Okay. No, it's most in the original bones. Oh, that's cool. And fifty k used to be a lot of money on yeah. a reno. Now it's like it's a not much. call out fee for yeah. an electrician. You know, fifty <laughs> k. My old We're man, in the wrong gigs, man. I know. My old man used to say, like, get a trade, son. You'll always be all right. Yeah. And I'd be sort of like, piss off, dad. I'm going to uni. Like. <laughs> I'm going to aim a little bit high. Yeah. What a mistake that was. I should have got a trade. There's more money in it. <laughs> what would you have done? Would you mean a sparky and try to charge people 50 grand for a call-out? I reckon I, I don't, plumbing doesn't speak to me. But I'd probably okay. be a sparky, I reckon. You'd be a sparky. Or the or a chippy. Okay. Maybe. Chippy. I like, I like timber. Yeah. Yeah. The smell of it. That's getting weird. But <laughs> what do you like about timber? Oh, I don't know. It's sort of like it's sort of like nature. I mean, it's okay. cho it's chopped down and yeah, and treated, <laughs> and stinks like shit. Yeah. Okay, maybe a sparky. <laughs> okay, we've confirmed. Mike in another life would be a sparky. Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right, I'm going to flip it again. Yeah. We've established that the 1970s property, you're pretty much going to get nothing off it. So yeah. this is kind of kind of killed my next one. But let's say you got your your 20 grand, your 20 year old property with your 20 grand on it. Let's go a 19. You said 87. Let's go 1990 brick home. Yeah. That's had, I don't know, 10 grand's worth of renos to it. Yeah. And you build a granny flat out the back. Ooh. That is costing, let's just make it a round number, $200,000. That's a pretty good granny flat. It's a good granny. It's a brick granny. Yeah. You haven't seen build prices in the last couple of years if you think that's a... Uh, too far above market because well, it's pretty much bang on these days. Yeah, well, the last... Depending on the quality. Well, you don't get a lot of... Most people don't do brick grannies, but, like, a lot of people will integrate them into their home mm. and make a brick granny. Like, mm. these are more blue chip areas. But the people that put the sort of, the, you know, that kind of modular sort of shitbox granny, mm. they were doing that uh, last time I probably did a schedule on one was maybe, like, six, seven years ago. Yep. And it was, like, 110, 120 grand mm. or something. The good old For days. a modular one. Yeah. For a modular. Yeah. And yeah. you're surprised that a modular at 110 to 120, sorry, and you're surprised that a brick would be up around 200. No, it's probably, that's, <laughs> that's probably, that's probably a call out fee for a, for a surveyor. For a yeah. For the bricky. Yeah. Uh, the okay. and 200K. So I've completely forgotten. <laughs> yeah, I don't what know what we asked. No, 1990. Okay. Let's <laughs> 1990, talk. brick home. Yeah. You buy it, you put 10 grand into it and you build a $200,000 granny flat on the back of it. Yeah. You build a nice one. Yeah. You've got plenty of room for plenty of grannies. It's a yeah. granny party. Yeah. <laughs> what are we depreciating? That's, that'll be my OnlyFans <laughs> handle, granny party. Do they have handles? I don't, I don't know. I actually, actually, you would know. You're telling me. Here we go. I figure it's like Here Twitter. We go. Twitter? I you look like you're it. crying. You're yeah, I'm crying. Shopping <laughs> Listen to you. All right. So. Oh, you're making me weep. 1990. <laughs> Yeah, I do that to a lot of people. Not all for good reasons. Uh, 1990, uh, yes. a brick home might be 100 grand to build. Kay. Why 100? Because the maths are easier. Okay. Well, actually, 110 will take off 10 okay. grand of plant and equipment. There you go. So, $2,500 a year worth of deduction. So, is it worthwhile getting a tax depreciation schedule just on that? I would say yes. I would say yes. Two and a half yeah. grand a year. You yeah. got three years of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, three years? Oh, well, I'm just going from your 87 to. Oh, oh, it's not. So no, it's no, 40, no. 40 years from the life of it. So 1990 to, to, to 2010. 2030. Uh, 2030. Got to yeah. be good. Got to yeah. be good. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hopeless. All right. Oh. Okay. So if we're doing it this year, we've got seven years of two and a half grand. Plus mm. we've got the 10 grand reno. Yeah. Talk me through 10 the, grand reno. I'm going to write these notes so, down. So did you do the 10 grand reno or did you buy it renovated? I forget. I'm going to say I put the tool belt back on and I banged out a 10K reno. Ideally say what you said in the intro to this question because then it sort of matches. But yeah, anyway, we'll go with you with the tool. Intro. People yeah. are just picturing you in a tool belt and <laughs> that, that's magic mic. They're enjoying that's you, that. Mate. That's you. 
Different life. Oh, um, 10 grand reno. 10 grand reno. So uh, again, like if you're doing it and then you're renting it out straight, yes, away, straight away, it depends what you do, right? If you do 10 grand in carpet, then you've got a 25% depreciation rate. You okay. Know? So it's um, a lot of carpet. Yeah. But like just carpet. What like, about, let's just say all you did was carpet paint a little bit of maintenance or something. Yeah. Well then you, you, let's say we, we split it in half. We say $5,000 worth of plant and equipment mm-hmm. and we say $5,000 worth of division 43. Okay. You can get two and a half percent on that 5,000, which is, uh, and then the plant. It's bucks on it. Yeah. Not much. <laughs> it's not much. Yeah. It, like the reason why I, I didn't actually make the mental effort apart from being quite slow with maths, cause I'm so addicted to like the computer and okay. an Excel spreadsheet. Yes. Like if someone says 10 plus 10, I might type it in. Okay. I'm so conditioned. It's depressing, but okay. It is sad. Yeah. It's a full life. Uh, anyway, we're recruiting for quantity space. So go to <laughs> mcgqs.com.au and you can be just like me. Get to the point. Yeah. So there's there's nothing in it, really. The 10 grand oh, yeah. doesn't make a big, so we'll, big difference. We'll, we'll, what do you reckon? Say 100 bucks? Yeah. Well, uh, $40,000 is $1,000 worth of deductions. Okay, so we're talking 250. Yeah. So let's say let's say 250 at best. Okay. Now the granny. Yeah. The 180 granny. K, uh, Sorry, 200K. 200K. Well, at, at a 200K build you would probably be looking somewhere around 10K conservatively okay. yep. per year for Division 43 and plant combined. So what does that get us? It gets us to like 12 nearly, nearly and a half, 13. Yeah, nearly yeah. 13 k So yeah. it's, that's very, very worthwhile. It's your best one you've brought up so far. Mate, I saved my best till last. Did you? Yes. The reason I brought this up too, the reason I love this mm. as a strategy, let's say you're running 13 grand a year positive Yep. on a deal and this is your deal. Yep. And obviously in the current interest rate market, like it's dropped that a little bit. They've dipped off a bit. But a lot of the cash flow deals we were doing during um, our pre-interest rate run, we were yep. sitting at like fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 per annum net passive. You're writing off, you know, close to 100% or, or at least 50% even if they're up at the at the 25K, um, literally writing off the profit, yep. you know, from from that. But if you were, if you were sitting at, let's just say 8K for an easy number, um, 8K in terms of net passive per annum, and you got a $13,000 write-off from depreciation, you're writing off that full 8K profit, and then you're able to write off the extra 5K if it's in your personal name, off your personal income as well. Mm. So it's it's a pretty cool little strategy, man. Like, I like yeah. it. I yeah. like it. Sorry, it's a pretty cool little bonus. Bonus, yeah. Bonus, I like that. that. That's the only reason I, I'm popular is because I you give people, well, but the phone's still ringing, all right? Okay. Just give that's me a break. That's desperation. That's not popularity. <laughs> Yeah, people hate tax. Yeah, so that's that's probably it. Hey, you invited me. Granny party are us. Let's, yeah. uh, all right, let's keep moving. Something I've got to ask with this, okay, and this is why I wanted to flow on off that. That's a beautiful one. I love that, yep. okay? Juicy, juicy. We're talking 13K per annum in terms of a write-off. Yep. Actually, one quick question I'll ask. How many years do you have it at 13, and then how, how far does it start dropping after that? Well, it depends on the breakup of what's okay. what's in it, right? Okay. So if we if we think about the 1990s build on the original structure, yep. you just get 2.5% of that, 100 grand, so 2,500 until 2030 as yep. we worked out, right? Beautiful. But for plant and equipment, it depends on the item. Okay. So carpet has an eight-year effective okay. life, so it roughly sort of runs out at eight years. Yep. It, it, it doesn't, but that's like a whole... That's a whole another episode that no one would want to listen to. Um, but like after after 10 years, the plant and equipment is pretty much gone. Okay. Like it's a kind of a non-event. So 10 years is your juiciest period that you're going to get the bulk of it? Yeah. Well, probably the bulk of it you probably get in the first year or two. Okay. Right? Um, but And it sort of tapers off yep. over time. Yeah. So the deductions, you know, probably – Probably in the first uh, five or six years, it'll be pretty strong and yep. then it'll taper off yeah. pretty hard. I actually kind of like that though. Yeah. Um, because like, and especially this is actually the question I was going to ask you next up was around the dimish- diminishing value versus prime cost. Yeah. And like, I like to take my biggest deductions that I can in the first five, six, 10 years. Yeah. Because in that period, that's when the cash flow of that asset is probably going to be at its weakest or its lowest, right? Like after that point, um, you should realistically have had a lot of rental growth. Mm-hmm. Uh, you probably had a lot of rental growth, a lot of price growth, potentially have reduced a bit of debt. So they, this bonus of the depreciation on top isn't really as required or needed right yeah um to kind of help bump up your figures so i I really love it from that perspective um can you give us a quick run through give the listeners a quick run through in terms of the diminishing value versus prime cost 
methodology as well. And yeah. which would you recommend? And I'll, and I'll add to that as well. Inflation needs to be factored in. Inflation used to be some quiet thing that just hummed away just, in the background. Yeah, now it's all trying <clears throat> to choke us in our sleep. Yeah, yeah. Even the last print is up and the RBA is talking more. Heard that. All these bloody enterprise bargaining agreements, these public servants that are wanting more money. I mean, fair enough, but the... Uh, <laughs> the dogs. Yeah. Not really, but if you're a listener. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> big big love. Uh, so diminishing value versus prime cost, they're just the two accepted okay. methods yep. that you can write off depreciation as yep. a residential investor. I'm actually legally not allowed to provide advice on which one to choose. Okay. Even though I'm a registered tax agent, you have okay. to talk to your accountant. But in our report, we put them side by side and you can look and go, that one looks better. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. As a investor, as an investor yourself, yeah. this is not financial advice at all. Yeah. I'm asking in your portfolio, DV all the way. How do you do? Yeah. DV, yeah, yeah. diminishing value. Because, I'm bec- the same. yeah, because like you said, it front loads the deductions. Yeah, I've actually had accountants challenge me before to say, what sort of psycho would go prime cost? Like businesses go prime mm. cost a lot of the time because okay. they want a stable, bankable yeah, yeah, return. Yeah, yeah. But they said, what sort of psycho? would do a prime cost and, and want like the deductions to be flatter but lower to begin with mm. but the same over time. Mm. And I thought for a second and I thought I've never actually met this person but let's say you're a Subway sandwich artist. I don't know how much they get paid but let's say it's 40 grand a year okay. or that's probably illegal but 50. <laughs> so uh, let's say 50. Let's just say 50. 50. Yeah. yeah. You're a sandwich artist, right, and you're on 50 grand a year but at night school yes. you're doing brain surgery. Okay. Right. Weird Flip, yeah. Uh, I would think the subway is the supplementary income and, and some free dinners, but okay, yeah. brain surgeon by night. Uh, well, you haven't qualified yet. Oh, right? uh, okay. So you're, you're okay. You're at uni, but your 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 ten year degree. Um, this isn't like educational advice. Yeah. I don't know how long it takes or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'd say it'd take a while. Give me YouTube and a scalpel, and I'll have a go. <laughs> <laughs> Have you already? No. For yourself? It sounds like that may have been something I've experimented <laughs> with. Um, but after 10 years, they'll be on $300,000 a year, yep. right? So the tax deductions for someone on fifty grand a year aren't as valuable yes. to someone on a – it's all because of the marginal mm. rate of tax. Yep. They might be on a 32% yep. marginal rate and then later on they're on a 45%. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, there might be a Medicare okay. levy okay. or something. So you're talking about potentially for those people down the track where their income is going to be higher. Yeah. But yeah, but just to recap on that guys, now Mike obviously didn't say this in terms of this is his way or his recommendations of doing it, but both he and I personally in our own portfolios, I'm going to back you on this as well. We both go diminishing. Um diminishing value. And the reason because you can claim the higher deduction earlier, um especially in the current interest rate environment, we don't know how long we're going to be sitting at this higher amount. Um I think it will still be for a little bit. So for the next, I mean even if you haven't claimed or you've done a depreciation report and you haven't done your tax for last year, potentially you could be getting a nice tax back from last year's one as well but the next couple of years it could really help you out if you especially if you're in a negative cash flow position um it could definitely help you out from that front as well mm. yeah mikey mate i'm pretty good all over with this is there anything oh oh hence the skeleton oh the skeleton guys by the way just saying so you know, I write down a couple of little notes as we go through here. I call it my skeleton. It's to pull me back and to pull someone like Mike back. When we go on our tangents, yeah. 40 minutes later, we're like, where the hell were we? The last one I wanted to say, and the reason I thought about it as well is because what I just said then. Yeah. Clawing back missed years. Yeah. If we've got listeners and they're going, I've got 10 properties and I've never claimed depreciation. Yeah. And every single one is an apartment with carpet in the kitchens and on the walls. Yeah. I've missed my depreciation. Yeah. I've missed it. How many years can they claw back? <sighs> I am sort of like their god right now. <laughs> I could start a cult of the like off the plan apartment <laughs> carpeted wall purchase of people. You've bought a couple of those, haven't you? Yeah. Okay. Absolute dogs. Um so you can only back claim two financial years okay. worth of deductions. Now I'll give you some terrifying statistics on this. Please. Um we analyzed a thousand residential depreciation schedules that came through our okay. doors to see uh, on mm. average, how long people waited. waited. Mm. Yeah. And we found that 6.7% of people waited more than two financial years, i.e. they missed out on deductions. Yeah. We did a report for them. They they went and amended their returns and got a juicy refund, but mm-hmm. they missed out. Okay. And the average amount of money they missed out was $20,537. They were 100% carpeted kitchen and wall 
apartment people were. I they? reckon they for were. that much of a deduction. Yeah, that's I reckon what they, they were. were. Well, they missed it. Well, it's because there were some people that uh, there was a, a particular lady. I won't mention her name. She Go. probably still doesn't even know how much money she threw in the toilet. Yeah. But she bought an off the plan apartment and she waited sixteen years to get a depreciation Holy schedule. Shit. We are talking sixty thousand dollars worth of missed deductions or something like that. Jesus. So and then what I did because um, I figured out journalists love clickbait. Okay. Is I ex- extrapolate. <laughs> you said that so like seductively. I just like click me, Granny Party. Oh my gosh. This is going <laughs> to on, air. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, um, it's going to air. We extrapolated. <laughs> we didn't cut anything, mate. Oh, jeez, you probably should. Probably. We. We extrapolated that across the investor population. Yep. If we applied that 6.7%, that 20537 it was $2.88 billion worth of missed deductions wow. floating in the ether that the government was spending on submarines or whatever they buy these days. And I figured, like, if you want to give money away, give it to a charity. Yeah. Don't, give, don't give it to a government. Don't give it to them. Don't give it to the government. No, right. no good. Okay, First, so you've got two years. Yeah. So let's say this year, people haven't done their tax yet. Yeah. They can claim the year that's just gone because that's a current tax yep. year. Yeah. Is it two years back beyond that? Two years of back claim. Yeah. Back claim so, plus the existing one they haven't claimed yet. Yes. So potentially three if people haven't run their tax yet, but done they, their tax yet. They need to amend their previous year's okay. return so the accountant might charge you for that, but you can work it out. Like so if you, you can't just block it in with this year's one and go, I missed these two? I don't think I swear I did works. that a few years ago. I probably shouldn't have said that, but I swear I did that a couple of years ago. We just like blocked it in. Now the ATO have redirected and I'm happy. No, I'm going to cut that bit out. (laughs) (laughs) That's why this should have been on my show. I told you. you. (laughs) Okay. So potentially either you're going to backdate it through the other's returns or um, you can potentially, who knows, speak to your accountant for financial and accounting advice around this, whether you load it into this year's or whatever as well. So, but you can claim two previous back years plus this financial year that that you, that you haven't done a return in yet. Yep. Beautiful. Used to be four years, but the government changed it. Why? Submarines. <laughs> I think. I Maybe. Don't know. Probably. Maybe they'll bring it down to one year. You might have got a ride on the one of those because you were going to be a special forces hit man, weren't you? <laughs> That's one way I to could, put it. could p- picture you just flippering your way out and, <laughs> I don't know, invading some sovereign nation. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yeah. Is it the jawline? I think so. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, mate. Anything else you want to throw? I'm pretty good. I've run through my skeleton. It's pretty bare. Magic mm. might more like Matt. Have you got anything else you want to throw in? No, I think that's good. But uh, but like whether you use me or not, because yep. you might not identify with all the weird stuff I've said. Like use <laughs> use somebody, and you will. Like there is free advice out there. Yep. If you flick an address to us, we'll give you an estimate. If it yep. works, it works. If it doesn't, we'll tell you why yep. not, and and send you on your way. It doesn't mean it's a bad investment. Though. Yeah. Mate, well, one thing I will say um, to the listeners as well is I have used probably two of the, I think you're one of the three biggest thing. There's three big ones, right? Yeah. I have used the two other that were the biggest sort of thing. Yeah, blah, 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 those guys. Um, man, I can honestly say the reports we get from you guys are more comprehensive. I can literally say that. And I've had the experience from, from having the reports from the other guys. So I find them more comprehensive um, and claiming more deductions. And I know it because I literally did an almost like for like property when I first started working with you to test you out. Did and you? I got more deductions on yours you than I did on my never mentioned that, you cheek. Little rabbit. Yeah, I wanted to save it for a special occasion. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> well, that's good. I've been road tested by Sammy G. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, mate. That's it. So, guys, honestly, if, if you haven't done one yet um, and you've got no affiliations with anyone else, I would strongly recommend to go have a look, good look at MCG QS with Mike. He isn't a sponsor of the show. He's just a good bloke. They do great reports. Um, and, yeah, I think you should go get it done. There is money being left on the table if you aren't getting it done. Mm. And, uh, and yeah, strongly recommend going over to Big Mikey. You got any discount you gonna throw on the show yeah 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 Yeah? way to put me on the spot well you know i don't ask for comms or anything when i flick stuff i don't ask for referral bonuses you know i'm like that we look after your people thank you man i appreciate that we'll take 50 bucks off the cost of the report beautiful if you mention magic mike magic mike and and sammy's jawline (laughs) and the scouting (laughs) australia podcast yeah Guys, it's either Magic Mike, Sammy Gordon, Scouting Australia Podcast, Australian Property Scout. Throw all that stuff in there when you send it over to Mike and you inquire what with the team. And uh, yeah, so something, one of those four will work. The price could go up <laughs> could, if you say mate, the wrong one. If they say all four, do they get four by 50 bucks off? Get out. <laughs> and that's time. <laughs>
No, nah, mate, thank you very much. I appreciate the uh, the offer to the listeners. Um, and, mate, I appreciate you having on the show and, and, and running through all this and dissecting it, mate. So it's been an absolute pleasure. I had fun. I hope that people are happy to listen to this <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> we'll see if they listen through all the way to the end. We'll find out. But, listeners, thank you very much once again. And as usual for tuning in, if you took great value out of the show or you know anyone else that uh, maybe has a, a property they've had for a couple of years and they haven't claimed a depreciation report yet or maybe they've never even ever heard of it before, uh, please send this on, share it around to anyone you think could take some great value out of it. Um, as always, if you took great value and you haven't left us a five-star review yet, which I must say, we're actually charging at the moment, guys. You guys are a bunch of legends. We're at about 310 five-star reviews really? on Spotify and about 200 on Apple. So I love all of you, your champions yeah. and anyone else that hasn't done it yet. Please do it. Jump on the wagon. Give us a five-star review if you're enjoying the podcast. And I hope you are. And until next week, guys. That's Big Magic Mike Mortlock. Appreciate having you on, mate. Sammy Gordon signing off. Thanks again, guys. Speak to you soon.